My special guest today is quite simply one of the greatest actresses this country has ever produced. With over 400 television acting appearances to her name, she has enriched a string of hit drama series with her phenomenal talent. She made history as arguably the toughest DI ever to grace Sunhill CID. Ladies and gents, Johnson's back. Make some noise for the mighty Jay Griffiths. Jay, welcome to the Bill podcast. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. I'm watching you. Yeah, yeah you are. <laughs> I'm not going to mess. Yeah. Not going to. Not going to mess with Johnson. Um, yeah. How? Uh, obviously, this is an extraordinary time. How? How is lockdown treating you, and how has it affected your work, your life? Uh, it's affected work quite dramatically. Uh, mm. I was shooting in Serbia, in Belgrade. So it's supposed to be there till June, uh, shooting a 13 part series. Sorry, it's the dogs going to have their tea, real life. Um, <laughs> it's five o'clock people. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're on episode five of 13. So literally uh, we got told the night before, pack, you're on the first flight out because they're gonna shut Serbia down, get back to England. Oh. So there are rumors, well, there are emails <laughs> saying that we're gonna be starting up again soon, but it is very difficult. You cannot shoot everything in wide, but to be, you know, two meters apart. So yeah, so they are working on this, but Serbia has such a small COVID uh, recurrence now that actually is better than here. Being sent back home, not that difficult. You know, I live in a beautiful part of the country. I've got a garden, I've got dogs. I get out every day. My life's not that hard, people. You've got the coolest ceiling I've ever seen as well. Ah! So. <laughs> yeah. Don't, it's got cobwebs. Don't look. <laughs> By coincidence, it is a year ago this week that your last casualty was transmitted. You're kidding. Mm. It's been a year already. Yeah, this weekend. Yeah, a year ago well, since Ellie went well, off into the sunset. So that, that must have been, I'm guessing, similar to to you moving on from a bill, a very brave decision to make, you know, in a hit show. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, just to miss the people. That's what you always miss, the people. It's not the hours, it's not the hours, it's the people, you know, and it, yeah. Oh, yeah, and I, I was talking to Amanda the other day because she's making um, face masks. Of course she is. She's Amanda Moon, of course she is. Um, yes. Yes, I miss them. God, that was fun. That was, so, you see, I'm just a serial monogamist. I love being in big series where you've got big casts, everybody knows each other and you try and tell the story, you know, such fun. I saw a lovely episode where you had a little Sun Hill reunion with Trudy Goodwin playing an alcoholic mother and that, that was a good little... Uh... That's right, yes, that's right, the argument scene. Yes, her pregnant daughter, her daughter didn't want to, uh, yes. Oh, gosh, yes, we had a reminisce. Oh, Trudy. Oh, one of the nicest humans walking around. Absolutely. Oh. Incredible. The, from what I understand, a lot of the crew on Casualty have, have you know, earned their stripes on the bill over the years. So Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. But most of them weren't born when I was in the bill. <laughs> so that's always a comfort. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and... Uh... Well, it, yeah, brave decision to move on. You were rewarded with a lovely Midsummer Murders, so that's a <gasps> good little... With the very glorious Nigel Havers. Now, that is a human being. Gosh, he made me laugh. We got told off so much. We could not <laughs> stop giggling. We were like four years old. Sorry. Sorry, Audrey. Sorry. She was the director. Oh, we had such fun on that. And Neil Dudgeon, charming human being. Oh, that was great fun. Oh, yeah, that was earlier in the year as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it seems time has gone all skew in. You know, I have year. to keep reminding myself what day it is. <laughs> yeah. It makes yeah. a difference, does it? It's not like I've got plans. It's not like I've got social events. <laughs> Shall I run in the morning or the afternoon? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> My decisions, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, take us back. Where did you first discover the acting bug? Uh, when I was at school, uh, I wanted to be a prima ballerina. Cool. In order to do that, you have to have some talent. So I had lots of skill, lots of skill, but I didn't have any talent. And uh, that was a very rude awakening. Yeah, I was about 15 when I, I, I was stood next to this girl in class who was just gifted, just 
gifted and I realized I so very wasn't. So I probably was never going to be that. So I stopped dancing. That was only traumatic. And, uh, and then I had an English teacher at school. It's always the teachers, isn't it? Yeah. All ones. And he said, oh, I'm doing this play, play this part. I was like, oh, okay, I'll do that then. <laughs> and that was it. That was it. Went to drama school. Voila, here we are, sitting in the room, talking to each other through a computer. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you discovered an, an exceptional talent. I mean, you, your quality, you know. It's, Thank you. Uh, oh, you're, yeah. you're so welcome. I love my job. I love my job. Were there any acting genes in the family? Or was this like... Oh, really... no, my dad drives a train. Uh, did. Uh, my mum did various jobs. Um, she became a welfare officer at a special school. Um, no, no. My brother now works for, well, I nearly said British Rail. Bless me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Children, you won't know what that is. It's when the whole thing is one network. I know, imagine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was not run for profit. Uh, yeah. It was run as a service. We used to be passengers, not customers. Anyway, I don't got yeah, so no. Wow. How how supportive were they in, in in you discovering this? They liked it, but they kind of went, what does that mean? How are you going to eat? Right. How is that a job? Wow. So to me, it seemed inconceivable that you earn your living doing that. I mean, you know, you're not American. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it was weird. How hard was it to earn your stripes? And It wasn't hard because I was so naive. I just, it didn't occur to me that it would be hard. I didn't know the horror stories. I hadn't come through that world, you know. I got to drama school. I didn't know what an avocado was. I'd never had one. I was, I was from Alston. We don't have avocados, for crying out loud. And hummus, sling your hook. You know, get in the sea. So it was all this middle class world I joined, thinking, oh, oh, okay. You know, yeah, it was wow. a shock. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I look back now and think, sorry, sorry. <laughs> what can you do? Who are your um, sort of acting heroes, or anyone who inspired you? Or I saw, I was in a play with Dame Diana Rigg. She was uh, uh, my first job. She was playing um, Cleopatra, wow. and I had one line. And I had to brush her hair, and her hair was a wig. I mean, no stress. You're playing Cleopatra. I've got to brush your hair, and not pull your wig off. That <laughs> stress. But her civility towards every single person in that building, her kindness. She was this huge. She's a megastar. You know, she's Dame Diana Rigg. You're lucky to be in the same room. And it was, it was so lovely that she was just kind, really good at her job and kind. What else do you want? Yeah. So uh, made a huge difference. Yeah. And uh, what was it like when you broke into television? Because you'd done a lot of telly before the bill came along. So what was, what was yeah. that? Yeah. Like? That was just weird. That was just weird. People, you know, I did, um, I did a series in, um, in the country, which is, the name has literally just gone out. We had to ride a motorcycle. So I was in full leathers, feeling well hard. I couldn't hold it. It was like this Kawasaki thing. I feet couldn't touch the ground. So there were two stuntmen holding the bike while I was sat on it, feeling hard, looking hard. It was like, this is my job? I just, it was with Amanda, Amanda Burton. That's it. Oh God, it was wonderful. I just loved it. I just felt perpetually lucky and just, didn't understand why everybody didn't do it. Yeah, you know? yeah. And people in those, uh, in the 80s and 90s, people always used to say, oh, short-term contract, how are you going to cope? It's like, no one says that now, do they? No. <laughs> you know, no. we are the only ones, uh, my generation especially, incredibly equipped to deal with downtime. We're used to it, you know? It's uh, not knowing what's going to happen, not knowing when you're next going to work used to it it doesn't make it any easier just because you're used to it it's still pants but it does end otherwise you don't eat. do you remember the first time you you saw yourself on telly like did you watch yeah that's the last time i watched really yeah, yeah. no 
Yeah, yeah. Can't can't cope. Can't cope with why did you do that? Why didn't you do that? Because and also can't cope with the edit because you've got no control over the edit. And so you'll see huge this great scene and then they've cut the middle chunk out. So your emotional journey makes you look like a moron. Like great. So no, don't watch. Can't bear it. Can't it's like, oh shut up. Shut oh. up. <laughs> Do it better. Just be better. Yeah. You made a huge impact in the bill. So how how did that happen for you? You'd played a a guest character. Yeah, and it's from that. And we did that in we did this tracking shot of eleven minutes through this house, raiding this house with John Strickland as the director. Oh God, that we rehearsed it for about six hours. That I'd never been, I'd never had such fun. So when they asked me to go and be a regular, I, I absolutely couldn't wait. And I went out with two police officers in their, in their car for the day. And they said, the best thing about it is that you own everything. So you walk in their house and you just touch things. Don't move anything, just touch it gently, because it's yours. Don't sit on a chair, sit on the table, it's yours. And it just, these day like, he said, you know, if you're going to a victim's house, don't do that. Be a human. Yeah. But you're not usually. With your rank, you'll be going into bad people's houses and just said, just own it. Own it. And the silence, they'll want to fill the gap. So just don't speak. I was like, yes. <laughs> so that's what I did. Oh, and cheated and plighted evidence, of course. Yeah, they did. <laughs> that was the very first time I had a fight with a stuntman. Oh, and he just made me look amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It looked like a scaffolding pipe because it was rubber. And they just only tapped him and he threw himself to the ground. And, oh, God, that was great fun. Running down streets and in your warren cotton and screeching tires. And, oh, <laughs> really, what more do you want? You know? Absolutely. Thank them to let me take my warrant card home. It's like, <laughs> legal. That's yeah. impersonating the police officer. It's against the law. So no, yeah. Every Friday, <laughs> yeah. Not once did they say this. How on your radar had the series been before you worked on it? Oh, it was. It was like the post office, always there, always will be. When you need it, it's there. You just know it's there. It's just there. I mean, yeah. What would you do without it? Well, now we know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's the, the yeah. loss of it is still felt very keenly. Because where else do you in the industry, yeah, well, yeah. You know, you had to, there would be script changes on set. It's like, well, get it together. It's your job, learn your lines. None of this, I need days. Well, you've got eight minutes, so get over yourself and do your job. There would be, you would just have to adapt, just get on with it. Oh. She was an amazing character, wasn't she? I mean, what a, oh, what she was a great, gift yeah. of a character. Yeah, she was yeah. just so naughty. <laughs> oh, dear, oh dear. Dear, oh dear. I'm guessing not much in common with you. No, I'm, I'm, no. No, I'm pitifully adherent to the rules. Yeah. What can I say? Yeah. You know, the people who drive around without insurance, how do they not die of stress? Yeah, I yeah. It. it would kill me. <laughs> and I'd have an accident instantaneously. I mean, how do they do it? Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, well, what, what did you enjoy about playing her and, and what was your approach? Obviously, you had that day with the police. Right? Yeah, just uh, always have a secret. You know, you don't have to... You don't. Uh, it's not to be discussed with anybody. It's just that always have... A secret and her secret was that she was terrified so consequently never let them see that ever 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 and it doesn't matter if you're wrong just be wrong really well but she would just bluster on and if it's inconvenient go over it and I just don't worry about the rules they're for other people not me so it was just immense power just to just just be absolutely blunt this instrument wandering around london doing whatever she felt like with this warrant card <laughs> so she could just be unbelievably intimidating rude 
illegal ish you know but it was always with what was perceived as bad guys but who are you to make that decision that's what we have courts for you're not courts you know, that's what we have a justice system for but she didn't really care about that bit <laughs> she would decide oh she she's <laughs> like I think more more ruthless than Chris Ellison's yeah. Burnside, you know. Oh yeah, like... oh, he could have learnt a thing off me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it was quite a a major deal, wasn't it? At this time, the de- you know ten years the show had been on the detective inspector role, which is essentially the star of the show. Any time they're in it, had only been played by white guys. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and so was it a sense of did you feel a sense of responsibility to own this opportunity or like? No, because the political ramifications for me, I was ignorant of because I was ignorant. I was, I was too self-absorbed to see its wider picture. And I regret that, but Hey, that's what young people are stupid. What can you do? Um, and these days I look back now and think that was momentous. You know, it was. Yeah. He, yeah. he helped to change things. And I love that. But at the time, no, it was just about, you know, do it right. Don't be an idiot. You know, um, no, it's just about what do we do today? I can remember sitting in my little flat in Lambeth, sat on the floor and I had 11 pages to learn. And I had 45 minutes before I needed to be in bed to be back up for, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, well, go on then. Hurry up, learn them. <laughs> but, well, so that's what I was, that's the only thing I was about. Oh, and going to the pub. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Louise, Stephen, you know. That's fun. Oh, Tom, Tom Butcher was on Casualty. Yes, of well. course. Marvellous actor. Oh, delightful. So that was lovely. Tom Kotcher I interviewed, he spoke very fondly of you because your your casting gave him something to do at a time where he wasn't doing an awful lot and he oh. he, he liked the free song that you guys yeah. had. Yeah. But I mean you you stirred up, you shook up the entire department, the character. Yeah. You you know, it was yeah. must must it must have just opened your script each time and think, oh yeah. yippee, you know. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, look, another row. Marvellous. <laughs> I'm going to walk all over someone's feelings again. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was, oh, it was great. And you, you had lovely chemistry with Martin Marquez. I think that was Oh, his... Martin. Oh, the gentle soul. Pierce, that was his character. Yeah, that's it? right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was lovely. Yes. Yes, and he sighed quite often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was his way of demonstrating rage, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that was a nice balance because because Sally was all kind of blah blah, and he was very steady and rather measured, and thought about what he was going to do. Unlike her, who just bulldozed her way through life. <laughs> just wore your heart on your sleeve. In, yeah, in, in the role, and yeah, he was very internal. I thought it was yes. a lovely. It was it a nice been, quite still. Oh, know. very a cracking dynamic. I mean, you yeah. know, it was the two of you in the titles, you know. Uh, yeah. It must have been very exciting. T- I mean, people, I think people forget how massive the bill was at this time. You know, yeah. It was like regularly the number one show on telly. Yeah, 17 million people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just madness. You, you know, you couldn't walk down the street, couldn't go in a shop, you know. Well, was that the first time it had happened to you on that scale? Yes, yes. But at the same time, the Mercury stuff came out. Remember, I was in an advert for a telephone for the mobile phone. So, they, so not only was I on telly at night, my picture was on billboards around the entire planet, it felt like. So that was very odd. Yeah. Very odd. There's no, there's no training for that, is there? I always find this fascinating. Like, how do you go from you know, obscurity and, and your anonymity just gets taken away. Yeah. Don't get on a bus. Don't get in an enclosed space is my tip. Yeah. Always be able to run. <laughs> yeah. Did did did, um, did people ever mistake you as a real copper? All the time. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Please, can you help me? I don't know. 
you're relying on me, you are in much bigger trouble than you're already in. But yeah. Go away, magic. Get over here. You're like, what? <laughs> no. Oh, nine, nine, nine. <laughs> yes. Oh, what a funny time. It feels like a, someone else's life sometimes when I look back. Feels such a long time ago now. Are, are you like aware of all the merchandise? Did you know you're on a DVD box set cover? I didn't know there was a DVD. Well, I... 1994? Yeah. Wow. Well, I remember um, that coat. <laughs> yeah, it's a good coat. Because you, 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 yeah, in your opening episode when you join as a regular, you've got like this red dress on, matching red lipstick, and this like powerhouse coat. And you go off to a cinema to like get some guys who are trying to rob it in motorcycle helmets. And really? Just, yeah, yeah, you just take them down. You're not to be messed with. Yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> so, who are these for? These podcasts? Are they for Bill fans? This Bill podcast has had over 110,000 plays. Wow. People still, they think of it fondly. Very much. I mean, these are actually from Australia. The entire series has been released on DVD in Australia. And it's it's still huge. Uh, uh, wow. Behind the UK, Australia is the biggest audience for my podcast. And um, oh, wow. yeah, started it like three and a half years ago. And... It just snowballed so fast. I don't understand why they cancelled it. I don't understand. What was the thing? Do you know what was the politics? What was going on? Apparently, it was purely financial. They couldn't afford to make it anymore when they axed Heartbeat and the Royal and, and ITV just got rid of all these mainstream shows, which were still pulling in the punters. And the bill... Well, it's interesting because you went back to the show at a time when it was considered that the kind of the the, the remit was to pull in the soap audiences. So it yeah. became more yeah. of a serialised show. Yeah. And whilst that still that era of the show has an enormous fan base still, like it's it's not like the bill when when you were in it originally. Yeah. It changed yeah. stylistically. The show went back to yeah. that hour-long gritty format at the end and and some of those are absolutely stunning oh. episodes and you just yeah. think why did they cut it it well the bill in its final year won BAFTA for best continuing drama series and then they axed it it's like hello <laughs> what <laughs> of course it did right it is bonkers but I, I I I'm always amazed like they've they started showing them on UK TV play yeah I shared the announcement. Which series are you looking forward to? And someone wrote, I'm just waiting for series 10, the Johnson years. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, that's very nice. The Johnson years. Must have been a good atmosphere on, on the set, I imagine. Oh, always, always. We just had fun, you know. Mm. Oh, we did laugh a bit too much. But that's okay. <laughs> remember it's your day job you know <laughs> yeah i can remember looking at where my office was and looking out of the window in one of my last shots when i'd been told i was moving to the overtime monitoring desk <laughs> oh the thrill yeah yeah and one of my last shots looking down yeah you, you and sean scott are just <laughs> really good scenes that's it oh oh he played that really well actually because the, the, the character could have been an asshole to yeah. Johnson, but yeah. he he played it very sympathetically. Yeah. Understated. Yeah. yeah, it was class. And and you do yeah. this cool thing because in your first episode, you you're you're catching keys one handed. You're like, give me the keys, give me the radio. <laughs> and in, in that last scene, you throw a bottle of whiskey one handed. That's and he right. Yes. One handed. That yes. was a nice little touch. Oh wow. You must have had, did you get a fair amount of freedom in what you could do? Yeah. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Which was lovely. Especially with an actor like Sean or with Martin, who would want to play with you, you know. Right. Yeah. I'm just remembering, however, doing days and days of interview room scenes where you would lose the will to live because you had to sit in that seat for three days running. 
saying the same um, question. Saying the episode. Same, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can remember those. And you've looked through the script, see how many there were. Yeah. If there was just one, it was like, okay, I can do with one. Yeah. No, how often am I get, can I leave the building? Do I get out? Do I get out? Do I chase? Do I drive fast? Thank you. Martin Marquez, who went, if I interview him, I, I certainly would love to. There's a very funny one. He had an interview scene where it's him and Kevin Lloyd. But Kevin obviously wasn't there when they filmed it. And so it's a close up on Martin. And he says those present are, you know, Danny Pierce and Tosh Lyons. And I'm like, you don't see Kevin Lloyd in the room. And like, there's literally one shot where Martin looks over and Kevin just goes, but they've obviously inserted at another point. Um, Martin had all the dialogue. Yeah. Maybe Kevin was on another location, didn't get back, because you had yep. like three units by then, didn't you? Yeah, so... yeah. Everything colour-coded. You had to write your costume on the top of each script so you knew what you were wearing. I couldn't remember, because plain clothes, it's all right for the uniforms, but for plain clothes, it would change. Yeah, you'd, sometimes you'd do six changes a day. That's how hard my life is, people. <laughs> in my own clothes yeah I had to dress myself imagine yeah goodness did you have your own dressing room or did you share yeah no I shared with uh, Joe Randall oh wonderful such a generous person oh Qual you're all quality in mean, that lineup oh. is qu like quality actors yeah. at the top of their yeah. game yeah well isn't it nice a huge tribute to you is that the 10th anniversary hour-long episode was your trial you know um, oh yes yes yeah for manslaughter yeah so and he good. just fell your honor you know <laughs> yeah 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 what yeah you clumsy yeah. yeah good yes good riddance wow. you, you get you get the drums and the top billing on the 10th anniversary hour-long oh. special that's what a what an honor you know oh absolutely and you think at the time that these things will last forever and you don't treasure them enough. Well, arguably, I mean, you could have stayed in it as long as you wanted, couldn't you? But... Yeah, but they offered me bugs. You know, the BBC were making bugs and that was just too much fun to turn down. Well, yeah. Running around cars, bombs, <laughs> blowing crap up. I mean, really? I went in a submarine, for crying out loud. <laughs> I was in a helicopter hanging out of it with a harpoon. Who could pass that up? That's the only reason I left. What a great yeah. reason, because everyone watched Bugs. I mean, yeah. we watched it as a family. So yeah. like, my dad yeah. was well gelled that I was talking to you today. <laughs> <laughs> big, big Bugs fan. It was unmissable, wasn't it? You yeah. know. Every Saturday night, we'd save the world. You're so lucky. Yeah. Was it oh. shot on film? Or, or yeah, video? yeah. Film, yeah. so... Film. Yeah. But there's a Blu-ray box set that needs to come out. <laughs> yeah, no grass, no trees. It was all urban. Nobody ate, nobody went to the loo. Nobody's makeup moved, nobody's hair moved. It was all utterly stylized, you know. Everything was perfect, except for the bad guys. Yeah, yeah, oh. and you sorted them out. Every week. Oh, the, I got to drive a McLaren, only 150 feet, but, oh, I got to go, I got to drive a car backwards chicaning through parking meters whoa yeah hello <laughs> uh, it's superb oh yeah i always felt for steve houghton he had a tough job yeah yeah to, to fill in there um yeah. and it's it's always hard because the F, I, i'll never forget it i haven't seen it since first transmission but i'll always remember it was, it was a fire in your apartment i think at the end of series yeah. three and it and it shows a photograph of you all burning. And then, of course, in the recap, they've had to redo it because Craig McLaughlin isn't Craig McLaughlin anymore. Ed. Uh, and I've never forgotten that. And it is, that's, that's a hard cliffhanger to... Yeah. Yeah. And we tried to persuade him. Really? Right. Yeah. It wasn't... It, oh, wow. Oh. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah, man. That has a huge cult following bugs you know, it's, it, oh it's 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 i think the guardian did an article not that long ago where it said bugs um uh a tv hit way ahead of its time wow why didn't they ask me cheeky exactly but i mean like you know 
it, it, it kind of, I think, deserves a reappraisal. Um, you know, the BBC cause... were embarrassed by it because of Spooks. Once Spooks came out, they didn't want to have anything to do with it. Nobody was allowed to mention it. If you put it in an article with the word Spooks, you weren't asked back as a, as a press officer. So nobody was allowed. You weren't allowed to compare it. So it just got sidelined. Thanks, Beeb. Yeah. Which is a shame. Yeah. Spooks was a great series. It didn't, you didn't need to hide bugs from it. I mean, really, we were no competition, you know. That's like... Ar ar arguable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no contest, okay. in my opinion. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm slightly biased. Um, and, a, and another cult series that uh, fans recently they did a watch along on twitter to your doctor who episodes i don't know if you're oh my. aware of this yeah. Ah, yeah the zygons yeah the zygons and people people demanding why a why you were killed off and b why you weren't made a, a you know a regular companion you know um uh, but i have a theory on that i i think Jack was sacrificed because they realised you'd make a great doctor. Oh, I love to. Yes, please. You'd be awesome. Can you imagine? Oh, oh. oh the TARDIS. Yeah. To follow in those footsteps of all the doctors that have come before. I'm doing a, a talking book with Tom Baker. Well, wow. no, when I say I am, you remember when we had lives before lockdown and we had plan? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so uh, right. Yeah. So in that life, I was about to do um, a play with Tom Baker. This is a big a, a finish. Doctor. Yes, big oh. finish. So, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, our fingers crossed. That would yeah. be fantastic. Yeah. Oh. I mean, you, all these hit shows, I mean, you must pitch yourself sometimes when you actually, I hope you feel yeah. proud of yourself because it's, yeah. most people would kill to get, <laughs> you know, a resume like yours, you know. Uh, yeah, I just, yeah, I suppose. I don't know. I mean, where does the bill rank for you when, when you look at your career? And Without the bill, I wouldn't have gone forward. The bill gives you, gave you this, I mean, I was, I was, it was easy. I was in it for a year. So <clears throat> but this understanding of how, what a camera does, how TV works, what a mark is, that without that, ah, oh, I would have been lost because nobody taught you you know I was at drum school nobody taught us about how to make a film how to do any tv you just you just had to learn and the bill let me do that with immensely talented people you know I worked with some of the best directors <laughs> in the country and everything was fast-paced and of course by comparison with today no it wasn't but oh god I'm, I yeah fond very, very fond. Yeah. What was it like when you went back? But was it nice to be asked to go back? Because it's... It was nice to be asked, but I shouldn't have done it. I shouldn't have done it. I was far too nostalgic. And it had changed. I didn't know anybody. You know, I knew some of the regulars, but if they weren't in my storyline, I didn't see them. And I, 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 I should have been clearer to myself about what my expectations were. I somehow thought I would go step back into that world. It's like, really? Uh, so I was, it made me very sad. Oh. I know. It wasn't, it didn't have, it, it didn't have the same feeling. And of course it couldn't. Of course it couldn't. But I was nostalgic. And it made me lonely. So I'm not sure I was, I'm not sure I did a good job. I don't know, but. Oh, you did a great job. There's no question of that. You, you're Jay Griffiths. You did a good <laughs> job. <laughs> Can you be my press agent? <laughs> great pleasure. Thank you uh, very yeah. much. I'm yeah. in your corner. Yeah. Uh, um, no, yeah, you're sublime in it. And, uh, you know, what well, was great because you, uh, you went, you went, I mean, the, the character's story art, I, I always love it when at first you're like simon rouse's golden golden yeah egg, you know yeah and then by yeah. the end of it you're like yeah. you can't wait to see the back of me yeah of what yeah and so yeah. you got some good scenes of him when you went back because yeah. like you know yeah and it's quite a compliment like eight years is a long time yeah. you know it's quite a compliment to you but to to i think only one person had a longer gap between coming really? back mm, so yeah 
I'm f- I'm full of these trivia geek things. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of lockdown, I need to get out more. That, 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 this, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, wow. we've talked about fantastic career so far. What's <laughs> the dream project? What What's the unfulfilled ambition? Oh, I have a I have a one person show called um, Don't Wake Me, written by my friend Rahila Gupta which is about a dead disabled kid. Sounds like a barrel of laughs, doesn't it? Yeah, it's really <laughs> funny. It's only an hour, five minutes. It's the best work I've ever done. Nobody's ever seen it. I've done it in Edinburgh. I've done it in New York, India, Basingstoke. Um, and I think it's, <clears throat> I can't do it for long periods because it's, it's very lonely being on stage by yourself and touring by yourself that's not good for your soul because you've got nobody to you've got nobody but it's time it's time to do it again yeah so that would be my next well after i've finished my if it's ever going to get finished (laughs) outpost if we're ever gonna finish that that should have been on air next week oops yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, i don't know what we do will life go back Will it ever be the same again, the way... No. I hope not. I hope not. Because it's shown us all that slowing down doesn't kill you. <sighs> Absolutely. Yeah? That not being the centre of the known world doesn't kill you. That having time makes you reflective and to perhaps examine your life and your inner life. And that is no bad thing. You know, lots of us run around so that we don't have to do that. And having time to, you know, reflect on your actions and could you have done it better? What is your character? Do you have a backbone? Do you have a moral compass? Do you have a code that you live by? Do you, what are these things, you know? And it's been interesting. You can see I've had far too much time by myself. Brilliant. I love it. (laughs) I've got the answer. Legend. You're insane. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> you had your meds. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah. Yeah. Life. Oh, blimey, life. Goodness me. Yeah. Yeah. What's your message to the Bill fans who will, who will be watching this from all over the world? Who will be... Oh. When, when I announce that you've done this, there's going to be a lot of happy people, I assure you. They're going to be thrilled. Oh. Oh. Just thank you. I'm glad someone misses it. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Yeah. How would you like to see it come back, if it were to come back? In its original idea, which was that this was about police officers seeing people in extremists. It wasn't about whether police officers go to Tesco's. It was always done from the police officer's point of view. And it was always about what happened in the station, what happened to those people and how the world impacted them when you are the guardian of the law, when you are the interface between the victim and that person. And that person who's done a bad thing, you have no idea what cross they're carrying. You have no idea how hard it was for them to just get up and dress themselves. So that that gap and also how policing has moved on since the 90s in real life, thank God, you know, to show that, show that journey. <clears throat> and also for me to be in it. Damn right. Yeah, imagine that. Bring it back, but bring it back in that one hour format. Don't skimp, don't, it's not a soap, you know? No, it's not. Soap, soaps make soaps really well. Let them do that. Do this, do this. And, after lockdown, things will get bad for a little while. You know, unemployment will go up. Taxes will go up. We've got to pay for this somehow. And there'll be, it will be very difficult for many people. And there will be consequences to that. So how do we look after, you know, people steal because they have no choice half the time. I'm not talking about really steal cars and ship them to Poland. You know, people do bad things 
often because there's for them there's no other way and how do we how do you police that how do you police poverty and lack of opportunity and lack of education how do you do that i don't know let's find a new way yeah on, i think on twitter they announced that retired police officers were going back to help with the you know policing of the uh lockdown and someone put a picture to say who who thinks this hero should be back and it was graham cole in his car <laughs> <laughs> and like then all there's just this flood of bring it back we want it back yeah. you know um yeah. you're perfect to lead it if it come back you're just <laughs> perfect. i'm there yeah i'm there i'm it'd there no, it'd be a no-brainer wouldn't it you know imagine yeah. that you know imagine only if trudy's there as well yes yeah we need and yeah. eric eric <laughs> Bless him. Who looks incredible? Does he? Uh, yeah, he's he's eighty this year, and and like he he has looked after himself. Wow. You know, I met him for a pint in London, and he he had turned up on his motorbike and his levers, and he looked. He still got a goal in. Of course yeah. he does. Yeah. He always did. He always yeah. did. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, a lot of a lot of talent in this show. So it's yeah. it's, a, it's a pleasure to celebrate you all. And thank you <laughs> thank ever so much for your time and for doing this. Yeah. I mean, you you are a legend. Walk tall <laughs> when you go. Was it nice to be asked to reminisce about the bill? It, it gives you. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Got my little book out. Oh, oh, what well, well, this this one? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I've and got you're the right in the middle. Look, I know. That, look. <laughs> nice, nice positioning. And all of those actors. Have you had Luke Harrison on? Yes, what a brilliant you, lady! She She's acting again. Yeah. Wow, I miss her. Oh, she's brilliant. We have so many great. I've I've interviewed fifteen from that picture so far. Um, well done. Because it's like a never-ending list yeah. of of talented people, you know. Oh, thank you. Oh no, thank you for doing it. I'm really grateful. I'm really chuffed. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Oliver. I'll see you thank soon. you, Jay. Really grateful. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Best of luck when you return to Serbia. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. On my horse with my fake ears. Yeah. Oh, really? Wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Good. I'm a thousand years old. No I've way. I've got fake ears. I've got pointed ears. I've got white hair. I've got black hands, so the black trails down, black fingers. Yeah. Uh, and I've taken over the world. Well, of course you do. So, yeah. It's called Outpost. And at some point, it will be released. Maybe. Oh, well, I look forward to seeing it. Oh, I do hope so. <laughs>